Because of the dark nature of horror movies, it's no surprise the genre is filled with creepy characters. Ironically, some of these characters can leave you more unsettled than the main villain. Now, we have previously covered horror movie characters that do make our skin crawl, but there were just so many. So, I'm Ellie with What Culture, here with 10 more horror movie characters who made our skin crawl. Number 10, Dr. Frederick Chilton in The Silence of the Lambs. In The Silence of the Lambs, FBI trainer Clarice Starling is tasked with interviewing the psychopath Hannibal Lecter, who's imprisoned in a mental institution. Because of Anthony Hopkins' tour de force performance, you can't help finding Hannibal charming, despite his nasty habit of cannibalising his victims. Even though Hannibal is a monster, he's nowhere near as creepy as his facilitator Dr. Frederick Chilton. Rarely in the history of cinema has there been a character with a more punchable face than this smug weasel. He doesn't seem capable of making a single utterance without licking his lips or flashing a smarmy smile. Despite the fact he's running a facility for the most dangerous people in the country, Country, he talks about his patients like prized specimens. He relishes the power he has over Hannibal when he speaks to him. He's such a slime ball. he can't speak to Clarice for more than a minute without making a pass at her. Although he pretends to care about helping others, he's noticeably jealous when Clarice makes more progress with Hannibal than his staff. The climax implies Hannibal will kill Chilton in the foreseeable, but it's still a shame we didn't see the little pipsqueak get his just desserts. Number 9, Mrs. Carmody in The Mist. In The Mist, a group of interdimensional monsters monsters spill into a town on Maine, forcing the residents to seek refuge in a supermarket. While our protagonist, David Drayton, tries to keep everyone calm, a religious zealot called Mrs. Carmody exasperates the situation by convincing her patrons Armageddon is upon them. Preying on their fears, Carmody convinces the rabble that she's the only one who can lead them to salvation. Simply put, Mrs. Carmody is a deeply nasty person. She's spiteful, petty, unreasonable, power-hungry, delusional, and manipulative. Also, the way she compares Amanda to a piece of crap when she tries to comfort her was totally uncalled for. However, what makes Carmody so unsettling is how much sway she has over her peers. Using manipulative rhetoric, she turns law-abiding citizens into a murderous mob within minutes. As her influence grows, so does her power, since she can command her lackeys to perform acts of evil with minimal effort. In fact, David believes Mrs. Carmody is so destructive, he leaves the market, believing he has a better chance of survival against the hellish monsters. Number 8. Frank in The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane the Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane opens with Ryan Jacobs celebrating her 13th birthday. While she's alone in the house, the landlady's son, Frank, makes an unannounced call. Realising there's no one else there, Frank keeps stopping by, hoping to ignite a sexual relationship with Ryan. Frank isn't menacing from the get-go, but the way he barges into Ryan's home and sits down like he owns the place immediately puts you on edge. Ryan looks violated every time Frank picks up something or touches her possessions especially her poor hamster. When Ryan calls her nosy neighbour out on his inappropriate behaviour, he attempts to reassure her by repeatedly emphasising he has children of his own. Despite his best efforts, Frank is incapable of shaking off his predatory stench. Although he keeps reminding Ryan she's a child, his body language makes his carnal intentions unmistakable. When Frank doesn't get what he wants, the crazed pervert turns into a violent maniac in a heartbeat. Because of his volcanic temper, Frank is scarier when he's calm, since we know he's always a moment away from blowing up. Number 7. Howard in 10 Cloverfield Lane After Michelle is involved in a car accident, she awakens inside a bomb shelter with two strangers, Howard and Emmett. Howard informs her a mysterious attack on the country has left the area irradiated, forcing them to live underground. On the surface, Howard should be trustworthy. He personally rescued Michelle from the car crash and nursed her back to health. He spent years prepping his bunker, filling it with enough food and medical equipment to keep them alive for years. He also supplied the facility with puzzles and movies to keep their minds stimulated. When you take all of that into account, it looks like Howard is the perfect person to be stuck in a bunker with. But despite his outward appearance, you know something's wrong with Howard immediately. Long before he becomes violent, we can tell there's something not right about him. When he tries to sound friendly and protective, Howard always comes across as guarded, making it impossible to know what he's thinking. Although he has moments of explosive anger, it's the quiet moments when you know Howard is at his most dangerous. Number 6. The Dutch Businessman in Hostel 
As Office Space and Get Out prove, Stephen Root has a knack for portraying weirdos. However, nothing he's done leaves you more creeped out than his performance in Hostel. While Paxton and his friends are on the train to Slovakia, Roots' character, the Dutch businessman, sits down beside them and starts making conversation. At first, everything seems fine, but every passing second, the businessman cranks up the weird factor. The way he flippantly mentions how you can pay to do anything to women in Slovakia seconds after he gushes over his daughter is the first of many red flags. He unsubtly ogles the group, complimenting them on their looks. He talks with his mouth full, which is just plain rude, and when he places his hand on the knee of Paxton's friend, the group finally urge him to leave. When you look at any of these traits individually, none of them seem like a deal breaker. But because the businessman performs all these acts in quick succession, it's impossible not to get freaked out. Although it's meant to be a shock when the Dutch businessman is revealed to be the surgeon who's torturing Paxton later in the movie, viewers weren't the slightest bit surprised. Number 5 Alvin Marsh in It Throughout It, Beverly Marsh finds herself being tormented by the shape-shifting entity Pennywise. But in many ways, her father is much more frightening. Despite the fact Alvin Marsh views himself as a protector, he's anything but. Based on the way he caresses Beverly's face and sniffs her hair, it's obvious Alvin has a disturbing attraction to his daughter. What makes Alvin more shady is the way he acts like he cares for Beverly. While beating his child, Alvin tells her how much he worries about his bevy. He regularly gaslights her, assuring Beverly he's the only one she can trust. Also, the way he asks her if she's still my little girl is downright sickening. When Beverly ultimately rejects him, Alvin gives up all pretenses and flat out tries to rape her. Alvin is so repulsive, he does something that sounds unfeasible. He makes you defend Pennywise. Yes, the menacing clown eats kids, but that's only because it's in his nature. However, Alvin goes against his nature as a parent, since he violates Beverly physically and mentally. Pennywise may be the antagonist, but he's entertaining and surprisingly funny. Alvin, on the other hand, doesn't have a single redeemable quality. Number 4. Howard and Pearl in X In X, a group of filmmakers hire out an elderly couple's guest house to film a porno. As you do. When the couple, Howard and Pearl, discover the nature of the movie being made, things quickly take a dark turn. The moment this pair appear, we know something is sketchy about them, and not just because Howard threatens the director with a shotgun upon their first meeting. When Pearl offers one of the actresses a glass of lemonade, you can just sense this unexplainable hostility in the room. When Howard assures his company his gun isn't loaded, the disdain in his face warns us no one should be left alone with him. But the real reason why Howard and Pearl freak us out is because they look so odd. Although their faces are never seen clearly, their discoloured skin, blackened eyes and skeletal frames make viewers restless. Despite their frail appearance, there is something about the couple's body language that shows they intend harm on those around them. Even if Howard and Pearl never did anything inappropriate, which they totally do, they'd still be terrifying purely because of how intense they are. Number 3. Peter in Funny Games in Funny Games, two sociopaths, Peter and Paul, force themselves into the showbiz cabin to terrorise the family. Because there's no rhyme or reason for the duo's actions, the showbiz can't negotiate with them, leaving them no choice but to take part in their twisted games. Despite the fact Paul is the more sadistic of the pair, there's something about Peter that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand on end. Because Paul is articulate and well-educated, he doesn't seem imposing at first, which is why he initially comes across as trustworthy. But when Peter is introduced, you get a bad vibe from him straight away. When he first appears, he asks his neighbour to borrow some eggs. In itself, this request sounds harmless. However, the way Peter awkwardly positions his body and fails to pick up on social cues implies he's unhinged. Although it's sickening when Paul orders the mother to get undressed, the way Peter silently gawks at her like a predatory animal is more alarming. Even though Paul has to get violent to come across as scary, all Peter has to do is stand there. Number 2. Keith in Barbarian there are certain human characteristics that everyone finds unsettling. If someone is eyeballing you, standing too close, or has a peculiar smile, your brain urges you to be on your guard. But do you know what else is creepy? Trying not to be creepy. A perfect example to illustrate this point is the 2022 horror Barbarian. The movie opens with Tess arriving at an Airbnb, only to learn it's already occupied by a man called Keith. With nowhere else to go, Tess is forced to stay with this stranger for the night. Because of the awkward situation, Keith does all he can to make sure Tess feels comfortable. 
Unfortunately, all his efforts make things more tense. He pushes Tess to have a cup of tea so much, you're certain he spiked it. When Keith tells Tess he wants her to watch him open a bottle of wine to prove he's not doing anything fishy, you're more convinced he's trying to drug her. Even when Tess starts to relax in Keith's company, there's something about this guy that makes it impossible to trust him. Number 1. Annie Wilkes in Misery In Misery, respected novelist Paul Sheldon is rescued by a nurse called Annie Wilkes after he gets into a car crash. After she takes Paul back to her home and nurses him back to health, he initially sees Annie as his guardian angel. As he spends more time with her, Paul realises his saviour is completely insane. Now, Annie Wilkes may not be the evilest villain in movie history. However, when it comes to cinema's most unsettling characters, Annie Wilkes has cornered the market. Although she comes across as a caring person at first, like most creepy villains, Annie's demeanour is different because it's not a facade. She has no malicious intentions towards Paul at first and is more than happy to care for him. Only after her insecurities get the better of her do we see the true monster that lies within. Anyone who's seen this Stephen King adaptation remembers the fear they felt when Annie yells at Paul or screams about the cock car. But what makes these scenes more unsettling is how Annie reverts to her cheery manner immediately after. Everyone remembers how disturbing it was to watch Annie crush Paul's ankles with a sledgehammer. However, this moment is made more unnerving by how she says, God I love you, straight after with fervent conviction. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed someone, then be sure to check our original video first, just in case that person's there. But if not, then let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.